Hello, parishioners of St. Mary. Praise be Jesus Christ. It has been wonderful for me to see that people are very hungry for the Mass and the Eucharist. I have seen an increased number of people coming to Mass, and it's been clear to me that we need to add another Mass time. So we will start celebrating the Vigil Mass once again. Beginning on October 31st, we will start having once again a Vigil Mass at the 5.30 Mass time. Also, we will move confessions from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. So the confession time will be 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. There will be a difference, however, for this Mass. We're going to do the Novus Ordo Mass. That is the ordinary form of the Mass that we're all familiar with, but we will be doing it in Latin. I wanted to make this video to speak about why this is near and dear to my heart. I've mentioned before that part of what inspired me to become a priest was experiencing the beautiful Mass at St. Patrick Catholic Church in Northwest Portland. Father Frank Canusel was the pastor at the time there, and the Mass was chanted. It was done in Latin except for the scripture readings and the homily, which were done in English. There was a wonderful choir there at the time named the Cantores in Ecclesia, and the music and the chanting was absolutely heavenly. I began serving at that Mass, and normally we had about six servers to assist at that Mass. We were all well trained, and it was there, in those circumstances, in those experiences, that I really fell in love with the Mass. And it is my hope that we are able to do something similar here and now at St. Mary Catholic Church, that it could be a similar source of inspiration for others, especially our young people. So this will be the plan. We will do the Novus Ordo Mass in Latin with the scripture readings and homily in English. There may be some that might object that perhaps such a move is not in the spirit with the Second Vatican Council, but let me answer those objections. I'm going to read to you some passages from some important documents of the Church. These first two passages are directly from Sacro Sanctum Concilium, which is the Constitution on the Sacred Liturgy put out by the Second Vatican Council. Paragraph 36. Particular law remaining in force, the use of the Latin language is to be preserved in the Latin rites. This next passage is from paragraph 50 of the same document. Steps should be taken so that the faithful may also be able to say or to sing together in Latin those parts of the ordinary of the Mass which pertain to them. This next passage is out of the document Musicum Sacrum. This is the instruction on Roman Catholic sacred music issued by the Sacred Congregation of Rites in 1967. This document was produced in conjunction with the Second Vatican Council. It deals with the form and nature of worship music within the framework of Sacro Sanctum Concilium. It reads, Pastors of souls should take care that besides the vernacular, the faithful may also be able to say or sing together in Latin those parts of the ordinary of the Mass which pertain to them. That's from paragraph 47. Pope St. John Paul II wrote the following quote from his apostolic letter concerning the Eucharist and its role in the life of the church and of the priest. The Roman church has special obligation toward Latin, the splendid language of ancient Rome, and she must manifest them wherever the occasion presents itself. Paragraph 10. The following quote is from the Congregation for Divine Worship and the Discipline of the Sacraments in 2004. The document is entitled Redemptionis Sacramentum. Mass is celebrated either in Latin or in another language provided that liturgical texts are used which have been approved according to the norm of law, except in the case of celebrations of the Mass that are scheduled by the ecclesiastical authorities to take place in the language of the people. Priests are always and everywhere permitted to celebrate the Mass in Latin. 
chapter 112. This last quote is from Pope Benedict XVI. It is from his post-synodal apostolic exhortation entitled Sacramentum Caritatis, paragraph 62. I ask that future priests from their time in seminary receive the preparation needed to understand and to celebrate the Mass in Latin, and also to use Latin texts and execute Gregorian chant. Nor should we forget that the faithful can be taught to recite the more common prayers in Latin and also to sing parts of the liturgy to Gregorian chant. So I give you these quotes to show that it isn't that I'm merely putting forth my own personal preferences, but to show that I'm actually fulfilling what the church is asking me to do. And of course, all of this is in line with Archbishop Sample's a document on sacred music. And I know that there can be a kind of emotional objection because we human beings do not like change. But I hope I can put your minds at ease when I say that it's only this vigil mass that we'll be doing completely in Latin. Our other Sunday masses will, will remain in the vernacular. And yes, of course, we will use some Latin antiphons from time to time in those other masses, but those masses will be celebrated in the vernacular. Now, of course, we have the unusual circumstances of being in the midst of a pandemic. So during this time of COVID-19, we will have our now normal precautions. And unfortunately, we still need people to register for the mass ahead of time because we're limited to 100 people in the church. You will be able to sign up for that vigil mass, which will take place on the 31st of this month. Online signups will begin Monday, October 26th. And so my dear parishioners, I'm now in my ninth year here at St. Mary's, so I think that I've moved quite slowly in implementing changes, and I have done so out of my care for you. But I have prayerfully considered this, and I think now is the time. I think this time of the COVID-19 pandemic has given us an opportunity to re-evaluate where we need to be and what is most important. It is my hope that in some small way this will help deepen your love for the Mass, by going deeper into our rich Catholic tradition and that you will appreciate the beauty and solemnity this change will bring to our celebration of the liturgy. If any of you are interested in helping out in any way for the liturgy, please do contact me. We will need ushers and lectors and servers and greeters and singers and hospitality people and people to help with live streaming and the like. And even if you may be comfortable with the way things are in the, at the other Mass times, I hope that you will occasionally avail yourself of the opportunity to participate in this new format for the Vigil Mass. God bless you all.